Right now it is time for Brian Ross and Real News. Uh, every week uh, we get together with Brian. We take a look at uh, some of the real stories that are out there. Good morning, Brian. Good morning to you, Marshall. You know, today we won't start off with, you know what, uh, the Ukraine. Uh, we'll start off with uh, my worst nightmares of the uh, of the primary season, and that was uh, I was just hoping for a bunch of clear-cut victories, okay? But, of course, in in the state that it, it should it, – that, that was going to create a problem in Pennsylvania. Uh, the uh, candidate backed by Donald Trump uh, had a fairly decent lead. Now it's down to 0.2 percentage points, and we have a lot of – votes coming in uh, that were, you know, cast not during the election day. And already, already, Brian, um, the terms of rigged election uh, are, are, are flying uh, once again. Of course. Uh, when in doubt, claim foul, right? And, 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 and now it's even during the primary season. And, and this is a Republican primary. Yeah. Uh, it's you know so you can imagine what the election is going to be like. Uh, well, in, in the and, argument that the Democrats are doing, it kind of falls flat in the Republican primary, uh, and uh, you know, uh, Mr. Trump is already telling uh, Men and Oz to, to declare a victory, even though he hasn't won. And everything that I'm seeing indicates that uh, David McCormick, the other uh, person who's just slightly behind, has such a commanding lead in the mail-in ballots and had such a well-organized campaign that he will probably creep ahead. But I think in any case, it's going to be a recount, because that's mandatory yeah. under Pennsylvania law. It's it's just what our political season uh, needed at this time. Uh, it just won't go away. It, it, it just won't go away. And the more that it's talked about, the more people are going to believe it. Uh, and this is what this is what our country is founded on, and that's that's the the biggest scary thing about this whole thing. The country was founded on the fact that uh, one person, one vote, and when you put that in question, uh, and uh, you're the former president, and 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 you have now backers in Congress uh, that that agree with you, it it puts our our whole form of government in, into a very very shaky position. Well, we have close elections. I think one of the things we should take a close look at and keep reminding ourselves is that uh, whoever wins as governor in these various states uh, could well control the person who becomes secretary of state, a post usually kind of overlooked as a backwater, but they control the uh, voting mechanism, and that could be important in two years. Yeah, it's... Uh, it's uh... <laughs> And while we see it locally, what's happening in New York with the redrawing of the maps, I mean, the Democrats tried to take advantage <clears throat> by by drawing maps that were wrong. Uh, you see it in Florida where the, the governor there <clears throat> put together his own maps <clears throat> and his own appointee to the court, his own appointee to the court said, no, 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 that's just not right. Uh, we, we, you know, we, we have to get both these political parties to, to, to stop this. Otherwise, it's, 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 it's never uh, going to stop. Yeah. <laughs> You're tilting at windmills there, I think, Marshall. Yeah. Uh, your politician's most important job uh, is to get reelected, and then we'll figure it out from there. So that's, they, they work very hard at that, and it's a, almost a full-time job, really, to raise money, run, raise money, run, raise money, run. Uh, but that's uh, apparently the best job they can hope to get. You know, at one hundred and eighty thousand dollars a year uh, for a member of Congress, or even less for governors. Um, you know, I, I I don't think we should uh, wring our hands too much. It's, there are close elections, and uh, you know, cries of fall are already foul are already being made. But uh, you know, there there is some integrity in the system, as we saw even in the last election, where you know, Republicans stood up to demands of Trump, and uh, we'll see that play out. In fact, next week in Georgia, where the uh, Governor of Georgia was opposed by Trump, refused to go along with Trump, and uh, Trump has endorsed uh, his uh, primary uh, opponent, uh, David Perdue, the former senator, and Brian Kemp, that uh, governor uh, in Georgia, the Republican who stood up to Trump, is ahead by 35 percent in the polls. He's, it's going to be almost a cakewalk for him. It's going to be very interesting to see how it goes. But the, the great thing about this is, is that the voter turnout in Pennsylvania was higher than expected. Uh, and and so that proves that people, at least in that state, uh, have not fallen for this where they're going to doubt the elections. They actually showed up in big numbers uh, once again, um, not only at the polls, not not necessarily at the polls, but with the with the write-in votes uh, that that come in later. So that's I think that's the good news side of that story. 
Uh, very good news, frankly. Very good news. Uh, we can move on. Now we can move on to uh, what people are finally starting to realize with the Ukraine is that not only uh, with the war in Ukraine with Russia affecting the, the, the supply of grain and everything like that, but uh, with Russia temporarily, basically, except for one port, uh, taking control of all the ports out of the Ukraine, uh, the, uh, the world economy is going to even suffer even more. We're in for a long, hard uh, patch here, uh, thanks to Vladimir Putin, uh, who, uh, despite signs that he's being defeated almost everywhere, just won't give up. No, and it's interesting. Uh, there was a, a a Russian official actually got on Russian TV last night. We'll we'll see how long his face is in the public. And, oh, right. <laughs> and and basically said that you know it's ridiculous that the that the way they're the way they're losing the war. Uh, he'll be facing a new uh, assignment in Siberia, most likely. Yeah, it's, uh, well, you look at the you look at the things that that this person uh, laid out, and absolutely true. I mean, uh, uh, they are depleted uh, in the in the amount of uh, weapons they now have, uh, with the amount of people that they can put in there. I mean, Russia is a big country. They've got military. They've got sides to protect, not just not just against NATO on the one side. So it's going to be interesting to see how long this will play out. And if uh, the uh, the surrender of the uh, almost 900 Ukrainian soldiers on Marpol and now put into a prison camp, if there will be some sort of prison swap and maybe some sort of opening for negotiations uh, uh, for some sort of ceasefire. Right. I mean, it, could, it could include Russia's claim that they now uh, own and assess, you know, and next uh, uh, this town of Mariupol, which is the important uh Port there. Uh, I don't know if Ukraine will ever accept that. Uh, I think also it's interesting out that, uh, you know, the term paper tiger, well, the Russian army has been exposed as that. They, um, <clears throat> and a fascinating story in the New York Times this week, that extensive corruption in the forces, uh, underpaid, poorly paid uh, Russian soldiers and Russian generals have been selling off everything. And they just, they are a weakened uh, state. Uh, they can't really fight a war. They have incompetent leadership. Uh, this disaster for them uh, last week at, at the attempted river crossing, where they lost almost 500 men and 60 tanks and armored vehicles. Uh, you know, that's as bad as the uh, flagship that was sunk in the Black Sea. Uh, wherever you turn, there are huge, huge uh, failures and miscalculations and just you know, outright blunders by the Russian military. It leads you to believe if Ukraine, uh, with all these weapons that, it, that that they're getting from and support from uh, NATO allies at uh, the European uh, Union, uh, if if they do get the upper hand uh, and let's say they, they push back, will Ukraine then at that point try to take back territory that uh, that Russia took? That is an excellent question, because uh, there could be the makings of a peace agreement, uh, but that's for the Ukrainians to decide. You know, the U.S. and others will put pressure on them probably to find a settlement, because the world is uh, falling apart as this uh, conflict wages on. But uh, that's, uh, yeah, at this moment, there's nothing in the Ukrainian statements that suggest they're prepared to cede a single inch of territory. And, and I'm not only talking about the in the east. I'm talking about when Russia walked in to get the to get their warm yeah. water port back. Sure. I mean, yeah, th- exactly. I, I think that would be the first place that the Ukrainians would go to retake. Uh, to be quite honest with you, uh, if 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 they are successful, if they're su- su- successful in this war against Russia, it, uh, it 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 just opens up a whole bunch of serious questions uh, that are going to it's going to affect the world for the next probably well at least my lifetime and your lifetime, Brian. Absolutely. Now, this is, uh, you know, and, and, and Russia, you know, increasingly isolated. And, uh, the story this morning in the New York Times that the U.S. is really seeking to uh, cripple, if not destroy, its oil uh, industry, because that's where they get all their money, and they've been doing very well. You know, strangely enough, as the war has waged uh, on, the uh, price of oil has gone up, and that means more money for uh, Putin. He's winning on both ends in that way. Well, as you know, in Connecticut, in the past 20 days, the price of gas has gone up on average 17 to 25 cents a gallon. <laughs> well, when it's $75 to fill up your car with gas, I think uh, well, every American knows that, and they know what the price of a half gallon of milk is or a dozen eggs, and uh, they're going to take it out on the Democrats uh, in the midterm. Yeah, well, 
People should do what I do. It makes you feel better. Don't let your car get under, get below half full because a half a tank at $35 to $40 is better than a full tank at $70 to $80. <laughs> makes you feel better psychologically. <laughs> yeah. All right, Brian, we'll speak to you next week. Fantastic. Good talk to you. Take care. Uh, Brian Ross and Real News here on The Breakfast Club on Robin Hood Radio.